It is over. The shortest serving Prime Minister stepping down. I came into office at a time of great economic and international instability. Families and businesses were worried about how to pay their bills. Putin's illegal war in Ukraine threatens the security of our whole continent. And our country has been held back for too long by low economic growth. I was elected by the Conservative Party with a mandate to change this. A mandate which slipped away after just six weeks. I recognise, though, given the situation, I cannot deliver the mandate on which I was elected by the Conservative Party. I have therefore spoken to His Majesty the King to notify him that I am resigning as leader of the Conservative Party. This morning I met the chairman of the 1922 committee, Sir Graham Brady. We've agreed that there will be a leadership election to be completed within the next week. I will remain as Prime Minister until a successor has been chosen. Thank you. Turning her back on an embattled premiership, only her husband by her side. This a very lonely way to leave. Sir Graham Brady, the man charged with the next steps. Here, please, Sir Graham. Here, please, Sir Graham. Setting out the direction of the party and country too. I have spoken to the party chairman, Jake Berry, and he has confirmed that it will be possible uh, to conduct a ballot and conclude a leadership election uh, by Friday the 28th of October. So we should have a new leader in place before the fiscal statement, which will take place on the 31st. A new leadership contest, the second in four months, conducted at breakneck speed. This time next week, we'll have a new PM for the press and the public too. It's bewildering. How disappointed are you in this? The public must be looking at this thinking, what on earth is going on? This is the governing party. Absolutely, and I, I think we are deeply conscious uh, of the imperative in the national interest of resolving this uh, clearly and quickly. By early evening, the detail coming to light. Conservative MPs have to decide fast. Uh, good afternoon again. Uh, just to confirm, I've met with the board of the Conservative Party and the executive of the 1922 Committee. The process for the parliamentary stages of the contest uh, will begin now. Nominations are now open. Uh, we'll close at 2 o'clock on Monday. Candidates will be expected to have at least 100 uh, uh, colleagues uh, nominating them. A decision to whittle the field back dramatically. If only one MP hits the threshold, we'll know the new PM by Monday. This will be quick, but for Labour it's not enough. It's demanding a general election. Seki, you're calling for a general election, uh, but at a moment of acute instability, there has been market instability, uh, there's a cost of living crisis. The Tories are going to replace the Prime Minister within a week. And the general election is going to take weeks and weeks and weeks. Can you see that that might not be practical right now? But the risk to the country is carrying on with this utter chaos. Um, so you've got this real choice, utter chaos with the Conservatives or stability under a Labour government. So the risk is not a general election. The risk is carrying on with this utter chaos. They've made huge, they've damaged the economy very badly in the last few weeks. This damage has been done. The Conservative Party's decided we need a new Prime Minister. Liz Truss has been forced to resign after just 44 days in office. This whole sorry affair has been a dark, dark chapter for the Tories. MPs are now trying to turn the corner. There will be a new Prime Minister next week. But the party is having, in the words of one minister, a collective breakdown. And after two lots of vicious bloodletting, first around Boris Johnson and now around Liz Truss, you have to ask yourself whether a new leader can stop the rot. The sun setting on a deeply unsettling day in Westminster. In these tumultuous times, a nation awaiting leadership. Beth Rigby, Sky News, Westminster.